how to build a bank on land. Stay tuned to find out what that means. Well, welcome back to Note School TV. We are here every single Wednesday at 11.05 Central Time. And so I'm so glad that you're, ch you're chiming in, you're joining us today. If you're brand new and you're trying to figure out kind of how this whole thing works, man, we got a couple of things going on. First thing you should be doing is going straight to the bottom and clicking that like button because we are going to try to bring the best value we can across the web. And make sure you're clicking the subscribe button as well because this is really going to help bring this content to into your newsfeed regularly. And I would probably say specifically for this show, if you really want to know when are we going live and you forget it's 11.05 sometimes, simply click that bell notification. It's just a little bell and you can just have all the alerts sent to you. We'll send you an alert probably about 30 minutes before we go live and you'll be notified to, hey, I need to chime in uh, to the, the stream today and say hello, right? So if you're here for the first time, I would love to hear from you. Tell me where you're from, say hello. It's always good to hear uh, from everybody, of course. If you're somebody who's uh, brand new to notes, or you're really even brand new to note school and note school TV, uh, and you're trying to figure out what is that next step? How do I learn more about what you do or the note business or how I can get involved? You can always go to noteschool.com slash TV to learn a little bit more of what that looks like. Um, and we are going to go from there. But with that being said, the easiest way to learn some stuff is stay with us today for this live stream. We've got an amazing couple of guys with us today. They're going to be talking all about how they really transformed their business model and ultimately learned how to really capitalize on being the bank. And after we talk to them, right, we're going to chat a little bit. We're going to have an after party at the end. So make sure you're hanging out. That's really where we kind of make it a little bit more casual. We answer your questions in the comments. And so why I say that is because I want you to be thinking as we go through, hey, write your comments into the, the chat box there, the, the comment box, the question box, right? That is how we know what to address in the after party. And if this is something that you said, hey, this is a really great video. I know another investor who could use this. Click the share button, share this video with other investors or friends and family who might need this information. Go out with that go-giver attitude, try to help somebody and uh, we'll go from there. So before we get too far into this and we bring our guests on, I've got to at least bring on my good buddy, Joe, so we can see what's happening in the news today. Well, Mr. Joe, how you doing today? You know, man, I am doing great. It is good to see you. It is uh, the middle of summer and uh, just loving life. How about you? Hey, man, can't complain. Uh, it's been a rather cool summer, so I'm quite happy here living in Texas. So, you know what's hot right now, though, is the news. So the tell news us about what's going on in the news. Very much so. Well, guys, the CEO of Taylor Morrison Homes, based out of Phoenix, uh, she says that the U.S. Housing, sh housing shortage will be around for years to come. The housing shortage that began uh, during the pandemic uh, is going to continue on for years. And it is simply because we are just, you know, we don't have enough houses out there. And uh, even though lumber has come down in price uh, and materials, building materials have come down in price, we still have a bit of labor shortage as far as to get those houses built. But it's going to hang with us a little bit. But, um, but, you know, more to come on that as we move forward. And so Google just announced that they are doubling down on commercial real estate with a $7 billion, Brian, real estate investment. Wow. So they have uh, be spread across 19 states, a billion in the company's home state of California, in addition to Seattle, Houston, Mississippi, Oregon, uh, Pinchia touted data center expansions in Nebraska, South Carolina, Virginia, uh, Nevada, and Texas. The plans will include Google's new footprint in uh, Chicago, Atlanta, Washington, and will add 10,000 new full-time jobs. 
So Google's real estate portfolio is worth more than $50 billion. And they're looking to build a, uh, a planned uh, a complex there in San Jose as well. So they're moving it up, stepping it up. Uh, well, it's always good. As everybody's always said, you make your money in business and you invest it in real estate, right? So that is the news for this week. And Brian, let's bring on our fearless founder, Mr. Eddie Speed. Hey guys, how are you? Very well, good, very good. I, I was wondering about that headline, like why did the virus, did it cause a lot of houses to burn down or something? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand like this whole- right. yeah. Building it on land concept. Yeah, it's not about yeah. overseas banking or anything like that. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, the virus caused everybody to go move out and not live with each other, and we need twice as many houses. Well, twice let's as dig many into it. Who are our guests today, Eddie? We have a great set of guys today that I have really become friends with and really respect uh, their business and them personally. And uh, they have an incredible story. They are in a business that I love extremely, extremely well. I really love this business and I love the way these guys do it. And I think they're doing it the smart way because you said it right, Brian. They are building their bank on land, on land they're selling. Ben uh, Leg and Greg Phillips, you guys are, uh, how are you? Well, good. There's Greg. How you doing, Eddie? So, um, little, little, little history here. Uh, you guys don't live anywhere near each other. Nope. I live South Louisiana. I'm in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. You're in Charleston, South Carolina. You're in South Louisiana. And you guys operate in about three states, none of which are Louisiana. Right, Ben? All right. All right. Yeah, we uh, both for, both Virginia boys. So we met met in uh, met in Virginia. Is that a uh, land deal? Are we going to can we talk uh, to somebody? No, about this dirt? It's actually, you know, it's actually, <laughs> we might not want to get that one. I'll call it back. Um, so, no, so that's we, we, awesome. So you guys do it like seriously, like virtually. Yeah, we we do. We we've been virtual, Greg. I guess for seven or eight years mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. So we, uh, when COVID hit, it, it really didn't slow us down. Not not a whole lot in our business from a structural standpoint changed at all. All right, so. The thing I love about your story, uh, you guys started out, you are you are every bit the image of an entrepreneur that I see, right? Just like you guys started out, you just kind of plowed your way through it. You had to go figure out stuff. You didn't have a great checklist when you started, did you, Greg? No, no. It was um, it was it was tough going for the first uh, seven or eight years, but we, we plowed through and um, I think. I think uh, after going through all that, we kind of took a step back and realized what we really wanted for ourselves in the future. And and next school was a huge help for that. So I got to know these guys. They are in a mastermind with me called Collective Genius. We are both kind of odd couple guys in the mastermind. That mastermind is primarily a bunch of people that are a hundred house to five hundred house a year house buyers. There's a few apartment guys in there. There's a few land guys like us and uh, a few note guys like us and just a few. Right. But we hang out there because there's some smart guys and really figured out some systems and processes that are valuable and great relationships. So we got to be buddies there. And then you guys came to note school because you're, you're saying, how do we how do we kind of 10x our note space? And uh, so I want to I want to just kind of go back a little bit, though, uh, and just talk about a little bit of your journey for just a moment and how you kind of got to where you are, even before we met. And then we'll kind of fast forward it and get Joe in the loop on that. Sure. Yeah. So, I, I mean, specifically, we, we met uh, probably 2008, 2009. Um, I'd gotten out of the, the TV business. I was doing TV weather for a number of years and talk about a tough business. So I moved back to Virginia. Greg and I met 
and just started throwing stuff at the wall, honestly. I mean, trying to, you know, what everybody does in, in real estate in the beginning is trying to wholesale and just, you know, imper imperfect actions, you know, just trying to cash some checks and get some deals done and figure it out. Um, and, and that's really how we started. And we just stumbled into land, to be honest with you. We were we were trying the house route and, and you know, it, it was tough sledding. And for every one call we got for a house, we got 10 calls for land. And I just asked the guy one day what he wanted. And we rode out there to Louisa County, Virginia and looked at it and bought it. And that was it. Started figuring it out from there. That's great. Yeah. So you progress forward. Uh, you guys like, like, how would you, Greg, how would you describe your role versus Ben's role? Is it different? Is it, what's it look like? Um, it, it's a good give and take. So um, we both, we, we understand our markets really well. And um, I think we're both, both very visionary and entrepreneur um, types. I'm much more analytical. I love the spreadsheet, breaking the numbers down. I could do that until, 2 a.m. Ben's great with uh, people, relationships, um, and really the the vision uh, as well of the company. So it's it's been a good good give and take, and we work all together. And you know we've been together for you know almost 12 years, so that says something in and of itself for running a business. Yeah, so he, hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't fired me yet. <laughs> so <laughs> so Joe, we got a real live weatherman on here. You know that, right? 50-50, Eddie. You can't go wrong. 50-50. You're always right, baby. That's it. Um, in, in, in fact, interestingly, when we have a real severe weather situation, Ben is kind enough to uh, pull up his uh, old computer and say, uh, well, here's your odds. In fact, I'm flying to Colorado here in a little while, and they're supposed to have some pretty good thunderstorms when I land, so I may need a little weather, man. Hey, little, you know a guy. That's right trying to avoid the mudslide thing. So so let's fast forward a little bit. So you guys primarily started buying what I would call infill lots and just uh, just vacant land, right? And and then that progressed to now you're kind of busting up some land. Let's take us through a little bit of that journey. What what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, we, we started buying um, rural land, you know, that's typically about an, 30 minutes to an hour, hour and a half out of a you know, decent sized city. Um, and really for a number of years, the first five, six years, we were really primarily focused on wholesaling um, and built a big team at that point. And it became, um, it was a job. It was a grind every month. I mean, we had a you know fairly sizable, you know, overhead at that point um, yeah, that we had to meet. And it was, it was a number of properties just kind of churning through those and finally got to a place you know, probably about 2016, I think, where we kind of stopped and just, do we really want to be, you know, 45, 50, 60 years old doing this? And and I think we both discovered the answer was no. And that's when we really kind of took our pool of money and just started buying and holding assets and creating, creating notes. Um, and that, I think Greg um, can speak to that, but that our journey for that as meeting you and, and obviously getting into CG has changed our trajectory of terms of what we focus on, the the type of assets we're buying, how we evaluate land. I mean, Greg spent a ton of time this year really getting um, dialed in on that, actually, a good bit. Yeah, I think after visiting you in Texas, taking a look at some ranches and, and really understanding what our underlying asset was, that land, we want you know the best quality of land that we can have and, and really bank on both the land as well as the notes on top of it. Well, you know, guys, uh, we had Mike Powell on Mitch Stevens, you know, a partner last week. And, you know, he was talking about him, how he and Mitch have kind of they're moving in that direction as well. And it's a it's a great place because nobody is out there doing it on the on a on a level that on an NFL level, right on a professional level. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, there's definitely more competition we've seen. It, there's has been an increase, I think, uh, I guess you can call it competition, more people getting into land investing. But as far as um, doing it the way that we we value and the way that we we look at it and, and on a larger scale, it's there's not as, nearly as many uh, people doing it or businesses like like if you're flipping homes or being in the house space. Yeah. Here's a little bit of some history with me. I, about 30 years ago, I had a lot of people calling me 
that sold land and owner financed it. They would sell multiple tracts of land. Sometimes they were all together and they just break them into smaller pieces. Sometimes they were what uh, scatter lot is another term. You heard me call it infill lots or scatter lots. People would sell land like that. Anyway, they would owner finance land, you know? And uh, so I found that this was, if the finance business really focused on residential housing or commercial real estate, there was a lack of financing for land. That's why sure. so many people would owner finance. Sure. And so then I would, I, I would start making these field trips. A guy would have 50 notes. I'd go out and go see the properties on 50 notes, right? You just, that's just a, sometimes a smart thing to do. So I took a lot of field trips. And of course I'm a cowboy. I like being outside. I have an associate's degree in ranch management. You know, you guys know all that. So I, I like going on these field trips because a lot of these guys were old ranchers or farmers. So I could really relate to them. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then I it literally, as far as 30 years ago, I started partnering with people that would originally call me to sell me notes. And then I would partner with them on, uh, on future development deals. Right. And so yeah. I've been involved with land guys for a long time. I love the business. Uh, I've met some really good operators, but I consider you guys to be really good operators. You've really figured it out. You're smart. You, you, you've been very meticulous in, in doing your homework. So let's let's move forward. So now the sudden you transition, you were land flippers, just like people in the houses, right? You'd buy them at one price and sell them at a higher price. Then you figured out you could buy the land and you, you started figuring out financial techniques where you could keep the land and owner finance it. So now now let's roll forward. So now all of a sudden you've essentially built a bank. And the good news is you don't have to go sell a piece of land next month to pay the overhead. That's right. That's, I mean, that's the, you hit the nail on the head on that one. So it's gone, at least for me personally, I, I know Greg and I have talked about this a lot, but the, the first of the month, you know, five years ago, six years ago was all the money's going out, all the vendors need to be paid, everything. Now it's money is coming in and, and we've learned how to increase, I think the stability of our portfolio by joining Note school and figuring out, you know, you're good to your bank, like Eddie says, your bank will be good to you. And the only right way, in my opinion, to do that is to buy solid assets and place a solid borrower on top of that asset and create a good note. Yeah, we, we, we hear people, you know, we know that we're not the only people that talk about land, but we see a lot of people that deal with what I call junk land. And I'm not a fan. I, I, I've seen, I, I, I promise you, I must have seen 10,000 notes on worthless property, right? But the problem is that customer wakes up one day and they won't pay. Right. And that's not a bank that's, that will be good to you. So you always start out with a good piece of property and you guys are really good. You figured out ways to investigate, you know, like, like, is it, is it uh, wetlands? You know, is it, it will, this, will, will it perk or can you put a septic system on it? You know, is there electricity? Is there access to all those things that you guys have really dialed in and you've done it all remote. I mean, you'll be able to be 500 miles from where that property is and what you have figured out is amazing. How do you figure this out? <laughs> <laughs> We've done a hundred thousand times, Eddie. That's how I figured it out. We got, and we, we dealt with some of those, those tracks that you talked about the quote unquote junk land. And we experienced exactly what you're talking about. And that steered us away from wanting to do owner financing. And so once we figured out the good quality assets, bring good quality buyers that yeah. will continue to pay. That's really what we bank on. And it's been tremendous. Well, you, guys, like you guys don't listen for a minute because I'm going to talk to the audience. Okay. I have about a hundred tracks of land. If you want you some worthless land, I've got some. I would be happy to, to let you go get some experience in that. So I have, you, you know, they say there's two ways that you learn a lesson, fellas. Blood and money. Yeah. Right? It costs you blood or it costs you money. That's right. You know? 
And uh, so we have a little of that in, in some of these deals. So let's let's move forward. You guys have now what I love about your story is, is you've now moved into um, you've moved into a wealth mode. And now you now you don't think like you did in 2015. You think more like a wealth thinker and not a transactional thinker. What, what does that mean when you wake up every day? What's that look like? I mean, for me personally, it feels like um, stability and freedom for myself and my family. It means to me, it means I used to care more about a $20,000 check. Now I care more about $300 a month because I know what that $300 a month means. Right. And it's a hard transition. It was for it was for both of us, I think, in the beginning, because we're so used to having the big checks and the money coming in. Quote, unquote. And once you start stacking those, once you start stacking assets and holding assets, because that's what a note is, it starts to compound and you start to see a balance sheet and run financials and see those numbers start to increase and then get into note school and figure out that you can leverage a portfolio of notes. It's not just cash flow, but you have so many different options um, that if you learn and educate yourself, um, you can take advantage of it's it's a game changer we, we go i think we've gone from 100 miles an hour we we take our time on properties we have a much smaller team just overall it just is a completely different feel now than it was greg how many offers on land do y'all make a week um anywhere from about 75 to 100 a week really <laughs> wow you see what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> and how big is your team? About four and all your virtual assistants. How big is your team? Four. four. Yeah. Well, Greg said four. Well, four. Maybe you have virtual <laughs> assistants. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's pretty <laughs> impressive, huh? Yeah. They make 75 plus offers a week on land with a staff of four, including themselves. Yeah. You know, we're, go yeah, ahead. When we were wholesaling, it was, I mean, we had probably eight, nine, nine or 10 people. And it was a, it was a job. It was a grind. And now, I mean, we, we're getting to the place where we're, we're discovering, you know, we're, we're probably another hire or two away from the, really the final and next level. We have some big ideas about what we need um but we never need to go we we're not going to need 30 people on a staff i can that's just never going to be what we will need or what one to be honest with you personally yeah and you know I, again it's going back to that what you said a minute ago ben about you know really have 300 get more excited about a check for 300 bucks than a check for you know a month than a check for twenty thousand dollars but the great thing is is maybe you can still you can, maybe you don't get the twenty thousand check but maybe you get a ten thousand dollar check or whatever it is plus you get that so you're just building that bank as as eddie has uh, always said just one thin layer of paint at a time or one thin coat of paint at a time and that's what it is that's you know, it and I, Brian, I, Brian, yeah. Brian has a good say in I'll, he'll, he'll be back on in a minute. I don't want to, I don't want to say it wrong, but it, it's basically dismiss what you, you, the thing that you think is impossible. It's, right. it's essentially, and that's what I see that you guys, right? When all this stuff seemed impossible to you until it seemed possible. Yeah. Right. And so all of us have life experiences that we don't know what we don't know until we know it. I know, I know a fair amount about you guys. And by the way, let me just tell you this. These are great guys. These are people that I would send my own blood to for them to help. And I have like my son, right? I mean, so literally I really appreciate these guys and what they know and just their whole, um, their whole mannerism. And I hope maybe he's my, my son has brought some things back to you guys that otherwise have maybe helped you win some ideas that, you know, to take it further. It's not that you, clearly you guys can figure out anything, but any, you know, speed and efficiency is great. But I just appreciate the fact that you guys started out and you started out with a transactional mentality. And, and we all listen to you de today and you definitely don't sound very transactional today. You sound like guys that think 20 years in the future. 
hundred percent. Yeah. I, before it's like, how many deals can you do? I think we said, obviously we set goals on numbers of deals, but that's not, it's not important anymore. That, 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 you know, we rather do way less deals, quality, quality product, a quality, you know, note. And, and, and the fact that we're out of wholesaling, I mean, we still wholesale some, but it's very limited because now we, you know, for, we can probably three to five X, would you say, Greg, in terms of oh, a wholesale deal? Absolutely. Either, you know, day one or over the life of it. It's, it's just, we have a lot more options now. So many more options. That's really and it. Ben, you said, you said something that I really like. It was, you know, you talked about, you know, the, the financial freedom and, you know, the other freedoms, but you said the mental freedom of knowing yeah. that you've got checks stacked up every month coming in. As an old mentor of mine said, uh, money has an end, cash flow is continuous. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I didn't really realize how much I was thinking about work while I, on the weekends. Um, you know, it's given me mental freedom. Greg and I have talked about this a lot. I've purposely done things that my wife and I have talked about. Like I've got a personal cell phone now. I've got a desktop computer that sits at my office. Like nothing comes home with me. Um, I still think about stuff, but it's not, it's just not the same. It's, it's an easier, just my have less going on in my head, which is always nice. Hey, Joe, I'm going to tell you something. Siri does not know which phone I'm calling. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got both. He's, not making, yeah. he's not making that up. Sometimes no. we will have a personal issue and I'm trying to reach him and like I've called his work phone and I don't realize it because I it's know. like, I I, well, I th it was a big deal. It's a big thing for me. Per we, Greg and I had talked at CG about this, uh, you know, last uh, last um, last month. And I told him I've been promising my wife for seven years that I would get it. I finally did. And it's, good it's made you. a big difference just for me personally. You can your business is good enough to you. You can leave it at the office. They can stay here. That's awesome. Yep. Let's bring let's bring Brian back in um, and. Uh, if you guys can stay around, we'll do the after party and uh, I bet you be, there'll be some questions. Yeah. yeah, I'll absolutely love it, man. We'll do, I, I got to say two things. First of all, there is what Eddie was talking about. I'd love to be the one that says that I came up with this saying, I just kind of copy it, but it's all about suspending your disbelief. Every time you think something's impossible, that's probably the thing you should be entertaining, right? Because maybe there's something there. Cause like Eddie said, you don't know what you don't know. And what's fascinating about land to me is that nobody thinks about it. And if they think about it, it's because they've done what I've done. And you've just been wholesaled some land. And you're like, I mean, they're not making any more of it, right? Isn't that the saying? <laughs> and so you buy yeah. some and you realize, well, man, I don't know what I'm doing. And so you don't really make a lot of money on it, right? But a little education can go a long way. And that's what I love so much about your story is that this really can be simple with some help that instead of being like, I'm going to try to figure out on my own, you know, being the prideful investor who said, I'll just Google my way through this. You said, I'm going to reach out and find somebody who's an expert in this and I'm going to go crush it. And you happen to find a guy who's done 50,000 deals. And so, you know, when you got 40 years of knowledge, you know, a thing or two, right? That's right. Yeah. Because you've seen it. a thing or two. Yeah, it's like anything else. If you put your mind to it and you really have the ability and, and desire to do it, then you're going to do it. I mean, Greg and I, we didn't know how to buy a piece of land. I didn't even know what an easement was. I mean, <laughs> I literally, literally, I remember sitting in a closing for one of the first closings and the attorney said, well, we don't have an easement. I was like, I, I was like, okay, I don't. What, I don't know what <laughs> Does that make me less profit then? <laughs> is, is the easement where the money is? Well, did you know what a, did you know what a perk test was? No, no, I, bet Greg, I bet Greg knew what a perk. Oh was. yeah, it has to do with coffee and coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> I knew all that. Yeah, that was Man, well, guys. Thanks so much for hanging around. Listen, we're going to have an after party here in just a second. But before we go to the after party, we we really need to talk about our sponsor, which is Notes Direct and the Feeding Frenzy Friday. Well, that's how you know, folks, is that it doesn't always go exactly as planned. And so be encouraged that if you are here right now hanging out with us, 
we're here with you. This isn't a recording, right? And so I'm so glad you're here. Listen, our show is made possible because of Notes Direct and the Feeding Frenzy Friday. Notes Direct is simply a resource where you can go and purchase a note, right, that's already lock, stock, and barrel. It's put together for you. You need to go and acquire that. But before you do that, you need to do a level of due diligence, right? You need to make sure this note is for you check all the boxes, and then you can click a buy button as easy as buying something on it, basically any website, right? And so if you're somebody who's wanting to acquire more notes, here's what I would encourage you to do. If you need education, reach out and go to that link that I talked about, noteschool.com slash TV to learn a little bit more. But it's not just that. Another way to get involved is simply by getting on our playlist on our YouTube channel. You can go to the, the Note School YouTube channel and go to the playlist called Feeding Frenzy Friday, where each week me and a veteran of the note business break down a note off of Notes Direct to help you better process what this could look like and some things to consider. It's a great way to kind of introduce yourself to the business, see how seasoned investors are breaking these things down to figure out is it a good note, is it a bad note, it based upon our preferences, right? And so go check those things out. I think it's going to be able to provide a lot of value. Next week, we'll be back with an all new Note School TV. It's going to be great as always. So make sure you're clicking that subscribe button and make sure you're clicking that bell so you get notified and you can come in early and you could start the, the, the show off right with us. Uh, we're going to be here at 11.05 Central Time. Listen, if you're somebody who's needing help right away, right? Maybe noteschool.com slash TV is a resource you've been to and you're already taking action and you need a little bit more help. Go to noteschool.com. There's actually a contact us tab up there. And if you'll click that, you could put in your information and someone from the team will try to reach out and kind of point you in the right direction. We'll try to do our best, best to get you going and get your uh, questions answered. You can always check out past shows if you want to go check out the past shows of Note School TV. Um, and obviously, it's Feeding Frenzy Friday as well. But it's a great way to get caught up if you feel a little bit behind. Um, as always, just make sure you're joining us on Wednesdays at 11.05. And if you can stick around, we're going to have an after party. If you can't, I hope you have a great weekend. Great rest of your weekend, a great weekend. But if you can stick around, I'll see you in the after party on the other side. Oh, man. So we have people from Greg and Ben, just so you guys know. I mean, we got Denver, California, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, South Carolina, Odessa, Texas. I mean, people from really all over the place. And I think what's really great specifically about this show is every investor from a mindset perspective needs to see that somebody else is doing something virtually. Right. They hear Eddie. And they see Eddie, and of course, Eddie can do it. He's he's Eddie speed, right? But when they see somebody else say, hey, look, we started this thing. I was a weatherman, and then I started wholesaling, and then I saw the light, and there was this other opportunity. And not only that, I decided to do it in a whole nother state. That is very encouraging, and it starts to help with dispen you know, suspending that disbelief that maybe this is something I could do too. Maybe this is the strategy that can help me reach that goal that I have. So I think that's super powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. We did have a... Go ahead. What? You know, but we had we had two puns on here to begin with. You know, you talked about let's dig into it, right? And then Eddie, I don't know, it was Eddie or, or Greg that said something about plowing it, you know, so it was, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, we had a quick question I wanted to go ahead and bring up. There was one who was talking about, are, are they buying low? And I'm, I'm, what they're really referring to in the question, I'm assuming, is regarding the acquisition price, right? Are you buying it like a wholesaler? Are you buying it on terms? Are you offering both and whatever works for the seller? Kind of walk us through uh, what you've had some success with and what you think's you know important in this market. Yeah, I would say um, we started out, especially when we were wholesaling, we would we'd have to buy low but now we buy based on value and what we can sell it for so sometimes we can take full retail um you know if we can add value to it and we do pay cash we do buy on terms as well so it's again just having all those options available so yeah um, I, love I, would, that. I would just add to it i mean if we're buying you know as eddie would say a scatter lot you know we have definitive numbers you know probably 20 to 50 cents on the dollar you, know, you want to buy good value. You want to make sure you're you're protected and make 
you know, do right by everybody else. But like to Greg's point, you know, if we're buying a piece of land that we can we can bust up and depending on how many lots we can, you know, because we know the values, we can pay for that um, particular deal. Just depends on the, the, the pricing below is land pricing is very subjective. So yeah. putting a value on it's one of the hardest things you can do. So yeah. low is, is always relative. I got I got to put a quick time out on that, though. I, I We breezed over this way too fast. The question was, are they buying low? And Ben says, you know, 20 to 50 cents on the dollar. When is the <laughs> last time you as an investor who's watching this show bought an asset at 20 to 50 cents on the dollar? And so I'm just saying there might be some things you don't know that you might want to start to check out, right? There that's low to me so that definitely answers the question right it's a different mindset than a house i mean it's just a different yeah. product yeah and, no doubt yeah. no what's doubt the, what's the story of a of a somebody that sells land to you what's their story i would i would say the vast majority of our sellers um they've owned the property for 30 years and they've never done anything with it they've inherited they've never done anything with it yeah. Good assets, good properties. We do our due diligence to make sure we verify that. But a lot of, I think with land in particular, a lot of people don't know how to sell it. They don't know, they don't want to deal with it. And it's not really causing them pain, so to speak. So they don't necessarily have to sell it. But we make the process very simple. Um, you know, we send out a, a signed agreement and we do what we say we're going to do. We close everything with an attorney. Um, and they just get a check and we make it very simple for, for a lot of people. And I think that's, you know, one of our, our strengths. Um, and you know, other than that, I think it's just when you get, you know, people will sell to us when the, the car, they need a new car, need a new roof. And that piece of land is just sitting there. Um, we get a call. Ben, what's the typical, I mean, excuse me, Greg, what's the typical reaction when somebody sells their land? Are they in disbelief that they could actually sell it? Um, I think they're happy that they have actually gotten it done. Um, it's something that they've tried to deal with potentially in the past. They might have even listed it with a realtor and couldn't get it sold. They might have tried to sell it, um, you know, personally and just didn't know what to do because they're out of state and just don't know what to do with land. So they're generally pretty, pretty excited to have it done. And like Ben said, we do exactly what we say we're going to do. So um, they're pretty happy with that. Yeah, it's great. And one of the things we, we talked about the acquisition side, right? We're talking about buying low and you say you make cash offers, but you also buy on terms. Regardless of the the acquisition strategy, the, the selling on terms, right? That's what's ultimately creating a lot of this, this cash flow for you. Land is traditionally thought of as not a cash flowing asset and your business model says otherwise, right? Yeah, 100%. Now it's... Uh, I think land is probably the the easiest asset to cash flow. I mean, it's hard to cash flow a single family residence uh, without a ton of capital behind you. I think land is the barrier of entry to to purchase properties is is lower because they're typically you can buy property for for less than a house. Um, and and on the flip side, the borrower side, it's hard to go into a bank and get a, a quote unquote land yes. loan. I mean, it's just it's not something that everybody can do, and we. Like Eddie has talked about, we really try and underwrite character and how valuable or how sacred that that borrower thinks that piece of land is. And there are a lot of great people who want to own a piece of land and they can't. Yeah. Well, that barrier entry is 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 just like you said, going to a bank and borrowing on a on a piece of vacant land is just it's almost impossible. It, it, yeah, it's hard. I mean, and, and a lot of the banks we've we've dealt with and talked with and seen people who have they have are a lot of them are at least 20 to 25 maybe 30 percent down they're arms for five to seven years i mean there, there are a lot of different barriers that that can cause issues it's regional you know i mean there's a lot of financing for land out here yeah but it's also in kind of the land that we deal in which is you know not necessarily the cheapo land it's it's rural acreage but it's very desirable and right. so, you know, uh, it's 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 different in different regions of the country, but the land business will work in a lot of parts of the country. People just don't think think it will, because I know I bought land notes from guys in literally almost 50 states, probably. Right. Yeah. So I, I've seen people operate in different ways, uh, but you guys are buying at a good price when you pay cash. 
you may pay a lot more money if you get terms, but obviously you can make it very favorable to your position. What kind of down payment do you get when you resell land? We're getting about 10% at least down now, anywhere from 10 to 20%, sometimes up to 30% down. Okay. But yeah, so that's one thing we've we've learned from you. It's I think the down payments um, are definitely a, a barrier of entry. We have a, a number of hoops we try and, and have our borrowers kind of jump through. We're not just going to sell a piece of land to somebody because they show up and knock on the door. So there's a number there's a process because you want to make sure you get you know half the note or at least a third of the value of the note is is the borrower. So you want to make sure you don't just sell somebody for you know a couple bucks down and take the word that they're going to pay you. Right. All right. So you sell a piece of land for a hundred thousand, you get 15,000 down. Is that fair average? Yeah. You carry $85,000 owner financing. What are the terms of those loans? In general, it's going to be, we, we do about 20 year notes and about 9.9% .9 interest, anywhere from 7.9 to 9.9. .9. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think they'll, they'll find too, it sounds like a high interest rate, but if folks actually do get loans from the bank um, for land, it's going to be a lot higher than folks are used to seeing on their primary residence. So it's pretty comparable to a bank actually. Yeah. These are definitely yeah. non-QM loans being made, so non-qualified yeah. mortgages, right? Right. Yeah. And give the, uh, the listeners who are watching to get a little bit better understanding of how that impacts you cash flow wise, that's about an $815 a month cash flow. That's a, uh, that's a nice one, right? That's that's a that's a good number. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, our notes are they, in general are a little less than that, but it's um, we've decided to stretch them out for twenty years uh, for most of our notes for a couple of reasons. One, it makes them more affordable for most people, and two, you know, we don't we want to have a longer run for our portfolio. We don't want this to be over in five years or six years, you know, we want to kind of stretch it out and continue to build up the portfolio. And I think it just solves a number of different um, issues that, that seems to work for us. Yeah. And it kind of takes it, it kind of takes it back. You guys alluded to this in the regular show part, right? Um, so somebody's doing the math in their head. They go, okay, well, these guys bought the, bought the property for call it 50 grand, right? They bought it at a good discount. Now they sold it for a hundred. They got 15,000 down. They have 800 bucks a month, but whoa, hold on, Eddie. I've, they got $35,000 still invested in that land, right. right? This is where I think we have been able to help you guys because it's how do you recapitalize? How do you go take this note, which is a great asset, and go pull money out of it in various ways so that you can get your capital back and go, you know, live to play another day. Right. That's, right. that's, yeah, that's right. The magic. That's how you build a bank. Right. Otherwise, unless you're just crazy rich, uh, you just are going to run out of money. Right. Yeah. And you got to have money to, to, to fight another day. And so, yeah. man, I, I'll wrap us up with this because we are out of time. I know there's several questions we didn't get to. You don't have to worry. We are going to follow up in the comment section there. We'll get those answered. Uh, for people who are trying to figure out, again, what that, how to, how to get involved in, and really even what a next step for you could even look like. If you're feeling kind of stuck in that spot, man, go to noschool.com slash TV to learn a little bit more, or at least reach out. We'll try to get you going in the right direction, however we can help. I'm so glad you joined us. Ben, hey, you guys, man, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for hanging out with us today. Uh, you're our first weatherman. Ben, so, you know, and Greg, we've, we've had a lot of uh, engineer minded people for sure, but it's, uh, you know, it's always good to have one. Oh, we appreciate it. Yeah, man. Hey, you guys have a great rest of your day. Mr. Speed, Mr. Varner, or thanks once again to everybody who participated with us here in the show. We'll catch you next week at 1105 Central Time on Wednesday. See you guys. See you.